Hello everyone, welcome to the video to take you through enzyme structure and properties today. The contents of this video will probably most be suitable for the A-level biology course, but also the BTEC level 3 applied science if you're studying unit 10 biological molecules. So the first thing that you need to be aware of is what an enzyme is. Most enzymes are proteins. Enzymes speed up chemical reactions, but the enzyme itself remains unchanged as part of the reaction. The substrate in a reaction binds to a region of the enzyme called the active site that you can see labelled on this diagram here, and that's formed by the precise folding of the enzyme's amino acid chain. If you haven't looked at my video on protein structure and how amino acids are used as a monomers to put together proteins into their primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary structure, you might want to go back and look at that, or just click on the link that's flashed up on your screen and it will take you to that video. Enzymes control metabolic pathways. One enzyme will act on a substance or the substrate to produce the next reactant in a pathway, which will then be acted on by a different enzyme. We say that enzymes lower activation energy, and you can see the keyword of the activation energy highlighted on screen now. We will talk about what activation energy is in a second. But I do want to say that the sentence that you see on the screen right now is a really good one to note down as a definition of an enzyme. The highlighted words are what the examiners look for in your answer in an exam. Now, as I said earlier, the enzymes have an active site to which the specific substrates can bind. The shape of the active site is specific to an enzyme and is a function of the polypeptide's complex tertiary structure. All this basically means is as the amino acids are put together to form the enzyme and they go from the primary to the secondary to the tertiary structure, it's the tertiary structure and the folding of that amino acid chain that will form that specific active site. The chemical that an enzyme acts upon is known as a substrate, and the enzyme acts on a specific substrate. Extreme temperatures or pH can alter the enzyme's active site and lead to a loss of function. This is something known as denaturation, and we'll talk about this a little bit later. Enzymes are mostly globular proteins, so we talked about globular proteins when we looked at protein structure. And for the reaction between enzymes and substrates to occur, they both must collide with sufficient speed and with the correct orientation. Enzymes enhance reaction rates by providing a site for reactants to come together in such a way that a reaction will occur. They do this by orientating the reactant so that the reactive regions are brought together. They may also destabilize the bonds within reactants, making it easier for the reaction to occur. Now, I've just got some key points on this coming slide now that you could pause the video and write down, but this is just a bit of a summary of the key information that you need to know. So the first point is talking about how enzymes are specific. This means that they'll catalyze just one reaction. So you've got hundreds of different enzymes catalyzing different reactions. The reason that they're specific or the reason that they only catalyze one reaction is because they only have one complementary substrate that will fit into the active site of the enzyme. And this active site shape is determined by the enzyme's tertiary structure, as I discussed on the previous slide. Each enzyme has a different tertiary structure, which means they have different active site shapes. And if that tertiary structure is changed in any way, then the shape of the active site will also be changed. And it can be changed by things like pH or temperature. When you did your GCSE studies, you would learn about factors affecting enzymes. And these two are, are two of the factors that affect enzymes. The tertiary structure can also be changed if the gene for the primary structure that codes for the protein is mutated. You learn a little bit more about this when we look at protein synthesis. So enzymes can be defined based on where they're produced relative to where they're active. Enzymes can be intracellular or extracellular. Intracellular enzymes are enzymes that perform its function within the cell that produces it. Most enzymes are intracellular enzymes. The example given here is the enzyme catalase. Many metabolic processes produce hydrogen peroxide, which is harmful to cells. Catalase is the enzyme that converts hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen to prevent damage to cells and tissues. Extracellular enzymes are enzymes that function outside of the cell from where it originates from. 
that basically means it's made in one location but it's active in another. Examples of extracellular enzymes include enzymes such as amylase and trypsin. Amylase is a digestive enzyme produced in the salivary glands and in the pancreas in humans. However, it acts in the mouth and the small intestine to hydrolyze starch into sugars. Trypsin is a protein digesting enzyme and is produced in an inactive form and secreted into the small intestine by the pancreas and is activated in the intestine. We'll hear more about trypsin when we look at required practical one. Chemical reactions in cells are accompanied by energy changes. I mentioned the term activation energy a little bit earlier, and this is basically the amount of energy that's released or taken up directly related to the tendency of a reaction to run to completion. Any of these reactions will need to raise the energy of the substrate to an unstable transition state before the reaction can go ahead. The amount of energy that's needed to do this is known as activation energy. Enzymes will lower the activation energy by destabilizing bonds in the substrate so it's more reactive. Reactions can break down a single substrate molecule into simpler substances or they can join two or more substrate molecules together. We can talk about this in a second. The most common activation energy is known as heat. The lower the activation energy, the faster the rate of reaction. And I guess the easiest way to kind of understand this is, let's say, for example, you wanted to cook a bowl of pasta. You would put the pasta shells in water and boil them. The, the application of the heat to cook this pasta speeds up your reaction. If you just soaked the pasta in cold water, they would take an awful long time to soften. So heat is a really common activation energy source. So this graph here is a typical graph that you might see in textbooks. It actually shows the progress of the reaction on the x-axis and the energy on the y-axis. And what you can see here is there's a curve which starts halfway up the y-axis. What this graph actually shows is the activation energy needed with and without the enzyme. And you can see that the energy needed with the enzyme is lower. Basically, what we're saying is that the presence of an enzyme simply makes it easier for a reaction to take place. All catalysts speed up reactions by influencing the stability of bonds in the reactants. They may also provide an alternative reaction pathway and therefore lowering the activation energy. Without the enzyme, the energy required is so high and with the enzyme, the activation energy is reduced and the reactant forms products more readily. I mentioned earlier about enzymes breaking substrate molecules or joining molecules together, and this is what we know as catabolic and anabolic reactions. Some enzymes will cause a single substrate to be drawn into the active site. Chemical bonds are broken, and this causes the substrate molecule to break apart and become two separate molecules. Catabolic reactions break down complex molecules into simpler ones and involve a net release of energy. Examples of catabolic reactions are things like hydrolysis and cellular respiration. Some enzymes can cause two substrate molecules to be drawn into the active site. This is where chemical bonds are formed, causing the two substrate molecules to form bonds and become a single molecule. Anabolic reactions involve a use of energy to build more complex molecules and structures from simpler ones. Examples of anabolic reactions are protein synthesis and photosynthesis. The initial model of enzyme activity was the lock and key model. It was said that enzymes were rigid structures similar to a lock and the substrate was the key. We thought that the substrate molecule is drawn into the site of the enzyme and the active site does not change shape in that just one substrate, i.e. one key, could unlock the door or could it fit into one enzyme. The understanding was that if the substrate did not exactly fit into the active site, the reaction would not take place. While some aspects of this model were correct, through further study and looking more into molecular structures, we've come to form something known as the induced fit model. Now, this particular model, known as the induced fit model, states that the enzymes are not rigid structures and they are indeed flexible and can change shape slightly when interacting with the substrate. On your screen now, you will see the hand in the glove or that young man putting his socks on and pulling them up. Bizarre images to have on a video about enzymes, right? 
Well, to better understand the induced fit theory, imagine that the enzyme is the glove or the sock, and the substrate is the hand or the foot. When we put on the glove, it gently moulds to the shape of our hands, it stretches or folds accordingly and fits us nicely, similar to when we put our socks on. Our socks are not exactly the shape of our foot, but they do stretch and fold around your foot, ankles and toes when you put them on. This is what we understand about enzymes, that they are not rigid. When an enzyme interacts with a complementary substrate, the enzyme changes shape as the substrate binds to its active site, and the enzyme and the substrate form an enzyme-substrate complex. This strains substrate and lowers the activation energy required. This particular model is supported by the study of enzyme inhibitors and we'll talk about those in another video. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop there for now. I want to cover factors affecting enzymes next and we'll also eventually look at the required practical as well as some past paper questions. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was super helpful. Bye for now.